Shalom friends, James Whitman here with your Hovering Study Community for October 2014. Our featured teacher this month is Claire Fan, academic dean and instructor at the University of the Holy Land in Jerusalem. When I first heard Claire lecture this spring at Christ Church in Jerusalem, I knew instantly that our faithful father was making a connection between us and another of his choicest Bible teachers. You'll see what I mean after listening to this month's message. So, here's Claire and her subject, John's Transformative Telling of the Gospel. I've decided to begin with the Gospel of John because it's really uh, an extraordinary theological reading of a terrible, traumatic event an event that led to great life and great hope. And it, John's telling of this story of Jesus' arrest, crucifixion, death, and resurrection is transformative for us. It transforms our lives because it transformed their lives. So if you have one hour to speak about the Gospel of John, you are in dire straits. <laughs> because this is a big, big, big book. It's big because its artistry is so beautiful. This author, we need to know a few things about him. Did you realize that the Gospel of John is the only gospel that within itself claims to be written by an eyewitness of the ministry of Jesus? So when we talk about Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and we say, well, of course, Matthew was the tax collector and, and Mark was the, maybe the young man in the uh, Garden of Gethsemane who ran away, but we don't really know. But he was Mark who was accompanied Peter. And we say Luke, of course, was the beloved physician, the companion of, of Paul. We're giving our traditional uh, ascriptions. These, these books are traditionally ascribed to these men, but none of our gospels actually have within it the name of the author. And when we look at a gospel, we need to ask the question, what does the gospel itself tell us about the person who wrote it? That's called the internal evidence, and we want to know what it claims. Well, Matthew and Mark and Luke do not claim to be written by an eyewitness to the ministry of Jesus. So in the forms that they come to us, they may contain traditions by eyewitnesses, but within themselves, they don't hold that claim. The gospel of John is written by an eyewitness to the ministry of Jesus. This is someone who accompanied him. How do we know these things? How do we know that this is eyewitness testimony? Well, we go to the conclusion of the gospel, the first conclusion. Actually, we go all the way to John chapter 21. In verse 24, we have just had a discussion between Peter and Jesus about Peter's future, and Peter has been restored. Three times he denied the Lord, and three times the Lord asks him to confess the quality of his love, the depth of his love, and just basically to acknowledge that Jesus knows all things this time. And then they talk about the beloved disciple, and they say in verse 24, this is the disciple who is bearing witness to these things, and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. That statement tells us that the, the disciple who we call John, who the gospel calls the disciple that Jesus loved, the beloved disciple, is an eyewitness of this ministry, and he belongs to a community of believers. And the process of writing this gospel is a process that's shared in community. That's another thing that we need to remember when we look at Gospels. You know, it's not auto-suggestion. A, a Gospel writer doesn't go into a room, close the door, the Holy Spirit comes on him, and then the pen starts moving. Gospels are written in community, and they tell us not only about the historical Jesus, but they tell us about that community and what that community's spirituality is like and what that community's interests are and what that community's issues are how do they define themselves? This community who gives us this gospel, 
with whom they, in which they are preserving the testimony of this beloved disciple. So there's a figure who was accompanying Jesus on his ministry. He is an eyewitness, and he's a very special person. Thank you.